Hey Summoners, how's it going? My name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for this video. In case you didn't hear, since patch 12.12 is set to be a long one, Riot has decided to actually give us a beat patch prior to the next major update in a couple of weeks. They've addressed some big outliers in this quick update, but there's a decent number of changes that you certainly can't miss. I'll run you guys through these changes, so make sure you stay tuned and stay up to date. Before we begin, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content like this, and let's get started. To start things off, we'll run through the top lane changes. Our one adjustment for the B patch is for Tom Kench. He remains a powerful pick, currently holding a 52% win rate in high elo. Combined with his incredible durability, Tom deals significant damage. Especially with the recent system changes taken into account, Tom has essentially received a plethora of indirect buffs. Patch 12.11 some received some direct ones as well, which has honestly led him to overperforming. To cut back on some excessive strength, his passive had its bonus magic damage ratio reduced from 4% to 3%. Know that this is still an increase in its original value of 2.5%. There's no doubt that this is going to have a considerable amount of impact on him. Tom's trading power in the early game and damage output in the late game will take a hit. However, this nerf alone probably won't take him out completely and it's likely that he'll continue performing very well moving forward. As he's one of the few tanks that is performing very well in the top lane, one can hope that nerfing him opens up the table for other ones. Tom naturally performs well against other tanks and with a small nerf, hopefully we'll see others thrive and some more variety in the top lane meta. Before moving forward, I do want to mention that if you're struggling to perform well this patch or this season, you should definitely contact the coach over at ProGuides.com. Our experts can help you master the fundamentals of the game, or gain more knowledge of specific champions. Make sure to check them out as we have coaches who specialize in all roles and champs. That's it for the top laner, so let's run through the jungle changes next. The first jungle adjustment is to the recent champion release, Belle Veth. She's set to receive a few more nerfs. As right expected, her win rates have continued to climb, soar even. As of the days prior to the B patch, she already held a 52% win rate in high elo and a 54% win rate overall. While she was already nerfed, the fact that she's doing this well early indicates that she's still too strong. Another thing to note is that Belveth is still a rather new champion. If left untouched, her win rate will rise as players gain more experience. Thus, even with nerfs, expect Belveth's win rate to not get hit too hard. That being said, here are the nerfs that she's going to be receiving. Reduced AD growth, reduced health growth, increased E cooldown, decreased E lifesteal, and reduced ultimate bonus health ratio. That's plenty of nerfs and our analysts will continue to monitor her performance as we move forward. Next in the jungle, we have a nerf for Wukong. His E's bonus damage against jungle monsters was reduced and his ultimate's cooldown has been increased. With increased jungle clear times as well as a longer ultimate cooldown, he'll take even more time before he's ready to gank in the side lanes, and you'll also have less agency in the early and mid game. The cooldown nerfs only apply at ranks 1 and 2, meaning that you'll have a harder time snowballing early, but should retain late game power. For solo lane Wukong, these nerfs are minimal, but the ultimate cooldown increase remains relevant. Following these nerfs, he may drop a tier in the jungle due to the decreased clear speed, but will probably remain a powerful solo laner as he's essentially received one minor nerf to his ultimate. The final jungle change that we have is a buff for Shaco. He recently received some adjustments, taking away some of his base stats in exchange for higher bonus AD ratios. The intent was to push players away from bruiser builds and to instead encourage them to play Assassin. As he currently holds a 48% win rate, it's decided that he's been too weak and needs some buffs to help him get back into shape. Again, he's received more ratio buffs and not base damage buffs because Riot wants players to build him like an Assassin rather than follow the current trend of building everybody as a bruiser. His passive, Q, and W ratios were all increased, while his W's cooldown has been decreased. If these buffs seem a little bit much, it's worth mentioning that his win rate prior to them was even 48% in high elo. That's it for the jungler, so next up we'll run through the mid lane. We'll start with some changes for Seraphine. Her passive's AP ratio will now be flat, rather than scale based on level. Thus, the ratio will be 7% at all levels. This takes a big hit on her scaling and reliance on levels, which technically means support Seraphine won't be hit as hard. She's already more popular in that role, but prior to this update, she was performing excellently as both a mid laner and support. However, her ECC duration was also decreased slightly, taking away some of her utility. This affects Seraphine equally in both roles, and she'll have less team fighting impact and slightly less kill pressure during the laning phase. In spite of this, the length is still a little bit higher than it was at the beginning of patch 12.12. Another buff that we have to mention is for Katarina. Like with Shaco, she was hit a little bit too hard. As a result, she had her dagger's AP, AD, and attack speed ratios increased. In addition, her Q's base damage and AP scaling were also raised. Finally, her on-hit ratio was increased slightly. Again, damage ratio buff should encourage players to stay away from bruiser builds and instead opts back into riskier ones, opening up some counterplay. Katarina has been a pretty hot topic within the player base. Many Katarina mains have felt like the balance team made a big mistake with the recent changes, while another part of the community feels like they were more than justified. 
On that topic, I want to hear your thoughts on our question of the day. Do you have a favorite change from the recent patches? I'm personally in that group where I believe that, you know, Katarina's nerf was justified. I think her tank build took away a lot of skill expression, and now that she's going to be buffed in the AP ratios, the good cats should still be relevant. Anyway, that covers the mid changes, so let's move on to the bottom changes next. Beginning with the buffs, we have Senna. She received a base health nerf, adjustments to her Q's base damage, and a decreased duration on her root. In regards to her Q's damage changes, it'll deal significantly less damage early, but more damage into the game. As Senna already scales well, she would prefer to have the combat power early to ensure that she can contest the lane and reliably scale. However, with all of these nerfs combined, she should end up a little bit weaker early on, making her fit the late game carry niche a little bit better. She was just too strong at all stages of the game, breaking the 52% win rate mark prior to the B patch. Moving forward, we should see the statistic drop slightly. Another marksman that was nerfed is Zeri. In her case, the changes were straightforward and simple. Her ultimate's bonus movement speed was halved from 1% to 0.5%. As this bonus is based on the number of sacks of overcharge that she possesses, the amount of movement speed loss is rather significant. Although her combat power technically remains unchanged, the loss of mobility hurts her defensively and offensively. The only situation where this isn't a nerf is if she's fighting a champion with similar range and they fight each other head on without much movement. Less movement speed means that Zeri won't be as effective at kiting enemies, and it also means that when she's chasing fleeing enemies, she should lose some damage as she needs to spend more time moving than before. For buffs, we got one for Caitlyn this update. Her passive's total AD ratio was increased by 10%. However, her bonus W damage for headshot was decreased. This is overall still a buff, as the traps aren't guaranteed to begin with, and the passive buff will help mitigate the lost damage. Especially in longer team fights where Caitlyn is able to get more headshots in, the added damage will make a difference. The later into the game these fights occur, the bigger the buff is. One final effect of this change is that it's a slight nerf to lethality Caitlyn, and encourages players to instead build a mix of flat damage and attack speed. That's it for the bottom lane changes, so we'll move on to the supports and wrap up this video. For supports, we'll begin a nerf for Yumi. Again, this is a simple change with some real consequences. Yumi's passive no longer grants bonus attack range. Thus, like with previous nerfs, Riot wants to increase the number of risks that Yumi players need to take in order to remain relevant. Not only have they made it more important for players to activate her shield, they've made it more difficult. Opening up these windows of vulnerability gives players a counterplay that they need to take her out. While it's not a giant nerf, it will require some getting used to and obviously make it harder to play her. Ultimately, the goal here is to make an otherwise safe champions give her enemies brief windows of opportunity to outplay her. Finally, we have one more buff to cover and it's for Leona. Her passive's base damage and damage per level has been increased. With this adjustment in mind, she'll once again have more kill pressure in the laning phase, demanding more respect of her enemies. This should help readjust the balance of power between enchanters and tank supports. In all honesty, this buff alone may not be enough and I think that she might receive another small one soon as she's sitting at a 47% win rate prior to this update. But the extra damage does add up and is not something to take for granted. In the late game, a full combo where a teammate activates her passive on every single hit will now deal about 100 more damage. Earlier on in the game, it's certainly less significant but should make securing those early kills easier. In cases where Leona and her lane partner are getting ahead, this damage buff is honestly a massive one that will create an absurd amount of pressure. That concludes the B patch changes. It's worth noting that we have a lot more of them coming up for patch 12.13, so make sure you keep an eye on our channel. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Feel free to let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments below. Also, read through the description if you want to join our Discord server where you can be the first to learn about any future events or giveaways for prizes like free coaching or RP. Enjoy the rest of your day summoners, and of course, best of luck in your games.